Hi, my name is Stevie and I like to write songs. We've only three songs left now from the 21 songs to mix, so we're very near the end. So let's get a look at these three songs and bring them home. Let's go. The three tracks we'll be working on today are Everything Everywhere All At Once, which is an Iron Maiden style pastiche based on the very well known movie. We have Causeway, which is a Pink Floyd pastiche, very much in the flavour of Comfortably Numb or something like that. And then we have one that I did as incidental music for one of my YouTube videos, and it's called Sus9, and it's a Steve Vai style pastiche about reminiscent of For the Love of God, but with elements of Gary Moore and stuff like that in it as well. So three pastiches to mix today. Let's not wait about. Let's get them done. Every rejection. Every disappointment has led you here to this moment. <laughs> Right, it really does have an Iron Maiden start to it, doesn't it? The first thing I notice is that maybe the guitars are a bit dry. Maybe we should have some more reverb, delay, something like that. Just make them a bit wetter and a bit bigger and more atmospheric. So let's try that first. I've never tried this plugin, Echosphere. I did get it as a free Waves plugin a while back, and maybe maybe we should have a look at it. <laughs> That already sounds really good. Wonder what plug. Oh, there's stuff for guitars. Right, let's try one. Solo one. But too maybe a bit too much delay on it. Solo two. Yeah. Let's try that in context. I'll add it to the other guitar that comes in just a bit later as well. Would it be cheesy, just as the kick drum kicks in there, to put a Joey Sturgis style explosion? I wonder. We are basing it on a movie soundtrack and maybe those kind of cinematic type things might be appropriate for this song. I've got a, I've got a whole set of explosions and gunshots and stuff here, so I sometimes just go through them and have a listen. too loud. That's the kind of effect I'm looking for, so that you just sort of feel it, but you don't actually hear it. Let's fine tune it. Maybe we just need the top end and the bottom end of it, and we could take out a lot of the mid. Let's have a look at it. Yeah. Right, I'm starting to feel that the rhythm guitars get a bit sort of um, too boomy when it goes up 
that but it's not really iron maidenly so typically what i've been doing is taking out this bottom end boost and just keeping the bottom end of the guitars a bit flatter when i feel that that happens more clarity and sort of palm mutiness without the bottom end I've read the vocals down 1 dB. Out of taking the guitar solos up 1 dB. Right, you know, um, the very start part of these verses that's not doubled up, maybe need to take that back up to the original. So let's just duplicate this track.
There. That bit there, I think that's a really cool note in the solo. <laughs> I think I would like to put a delay through on that as well, just to accent it even more. Right, so what I've ended up doing is doing exactly the same thing as you would do with vocals, and I've made a separate track with the delay through, and I've got direct turned off. So that way it's not affecting the actual mix of the electric guitar, it's just adding delay when I need it. So let's put some automation in. We probably want to get that quite close so that it doesn't delay any of the noise on the guitar track. And it, I want it off by then. But let's get it loud enough so that it's really noticeable. Okay, cool. And where do we want it turned off again then? I wonder what a, a full I guess those vocals are going to get a bit buried, so I'll take them back into the louder track. Cool, we'll go with that one anyway. I just want you to know that people like me, old people, we understand. Right, I think that main theme guitar coming in there could be a bit brighter maybe. And I've brightened up the old man speaking at the start just to try and make his voice. It shouldn't be too poppy out of the mix, but it should be legible enough.
Right, so what I've just done there is I've just realised the track spacer's not really on. I have used track spacer to duck out the guitars and make room for the vocals. And then when the guitar, when the main guitar solo comes on, I've done exactly the same thing. The rhythm guitars are being ducked out of the way to make room for the lead guitar. I actually think that whole thing gets a tiny bit lost, so I think I might do the same thing and make an even louder one, a dB louder, and just take this little phrase onto that track. That's not really working for me, so I think maybe what I'm hearing is that maybe this guitar needs to come down. I sometimes find that it's a wee bit handier whenever you want to do automation just to make another track and have it at a different volume because then the relative information from each thing doesn't get lost. It just sometimes is a bit easier for me. It just goes to show you, it's always worth remembering all the time, whenever you can't hear something. Maybe instead of turning it up, you need to turn something else down. There's one other bit of mixing as well in it that um, always bugs me, so let's find that. <laughs> So that finds your way to the crossroad. I mean, it gets completely lost. So let's see if I can pull that out of the mix. Right, you don't need it for To The Causeway because by that stage the guitar has sort of died out. So it's just a matter of deciding now what the right volume for that little boost should be. You know what? That's working. So I just changed the shape of it because as I was sustaining way, um, the guitar came out of the way and the compression and the mastering pulled that sound up. So I wanted to pull it down again to compensate so it sounded more natural. So we've got that line popping out now, which is good. And I don't think there's anything else in this song for now that jumps out at me. So we'll move on to the next one.
I don't think I have anything to do with that song. So, yay! Finished mixing the tracks. So that's good. Alright, so that's the first pass at the mixing of all the tracks. So what I plan to do over the next week is get a listen to all the songs and do either a final sign-off on them or if they need any more tweaks and stuff, and then I'll do that. In next week's episode, we're going to be looking at doing some artwork. My plan currently is that I want to release all the songs as singles on DistroKid, which means they'll be on Spotify and iTunes and all the other places where you can stream music. I didn't really feel that there was much of a need to release an album because we could have this debate and let me know what you think about it in the comments, but I have a feeling that albums are dead as a format. I don't see any point in packaging this up as albums. For starters, it's two albums worth of material. And I think the songs have a much better chance on their own just being released as singles. So there'll be individual artwork done for each of the singles. So that's quite a lot of photoshopping to do. So I'll try and cover that in next week's episode and we'll have a look at some of the ideas I have for the artwork. I know these videos have been drawn out over a few weeks now and apologies for anybody who's looking forward to just getting back into the songwriting again. I will be doing that very soon. As soon as all these songs are released and out of the way, we'll get back to straightforward songwriting. And I don't ever want to end up in a situation like this again where I've got 20 songs that all need to be completed and finalised at the same time. We'll take one song at a time going forward and we'll take it right through to the release process. Alright guys, so I hope you found that interesting, and bear with me if you're not, because there will be some more songwriting coming up soon. Thanks so much guys for watching and following my progress in these songs. You guys rock!